Hi everyone, it's Liam here from biggerplate.com. In this short video, I'm going to provide a quick overview of a simple but highly effective process to help individuals and teams with strategic planning using the all new MindMeister. I'm going to show you how you can create a summary of your current strategic position, develop your goals for the future, and capture key actions to get us moving in the right direction, all within a single MindMeister map. So let's take a look. A great way to start your strategic planning is by thinking about your current position and what you see around you. The purpose at this stage of the process is to pause, reflect, capture important ideas and information, and summarize the key issues that might influence your plans. Now, there are many established frameworks for strategic thinking like this. For example, you might have seen a SWOT analysis, PESTEL analysis, or any other of the many established models. And it's a great idea to use templates and frameworks that help you get started easily. Have a look on biggerplate.com and you'll find lots of different mind map templates for strategic thinking. So just find one that you think fits your requirements and situation and give it a try. For our demonstration today, let's use a SWOT analysis template and start brainstorming the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we see in relation to our organization today. With a simple SWOT analysis template like this one, you can jump straight into the process of adding ideas and information into the MindMeister map using just the insert or return keys on your keyboard to quickly capture ideas. The mind map structure encourages us to be expansive and build on our ideas further by adding subtopics wherever we want to add more depth and detail. For example, if we've added skills as a strength, then we can think about expanding on that further by adding subtopics that summarize what skills we're talking about. For example, adding technical and creative under skills, and then if we want to, building out even further on those topics. As you go through this brainstorming process, it can be helpful to think in terms of capturing and categorizing ideas and information. For example, we've captured a few ideas here in the strengths area, and we now want to create a tidier summary structure. So we can look at what we've captured so far and think about what categories of information we can see here. For example, there are a number of topics in this area which could be categorized as people strengths. And so we add a people branch into the map and then move the relevant topics into this area like so. Now, the minute we create this people branch, we're also going to be prompted to think of any other people strengths that could be added. And so the categorization and subcategorization is a great way to trigger additional thoughts and ideas in relation to a particular topic. Not only are you capturing the perspectives and what you know already, but you're also prompting additional ideas at the same time. Once you've spent some time capturing and categorizing ideas and information in your SWOT mind map, it might start to look a little bit more like this, which is a more developed version of the map we were just looking at. You can see that we now have a clear structure for all of the inputs, and the software makes it easy for us to show or hide parts of the mind map to view whatever levels of detail we want. Within MindMeister, we can also zoom in and out of the information really easily so we can focus on the details or zoom back out for that high level picture. Once you've built out your initial mind map by capturing and categorizing ideas and information, it's a good idea to try and push yourself or your group further by making the priority issues highly visible within your mind map. MindMeister makes this easy to do in any number of ways. For example, you can use the icon functionality within the tool to make certain topics stand out by marking them with images and icons like so. Alternatively, or even in addition, you can also use the topic formatting within MindMeister to make certain topics stand out in the diagram, perhaps making important issues a different color, for example, changing things to this bright red color if they are high importance areas. An additional option that we use internally at Bigger Plate and with our clients is actually to create a whole new topic in the mind map called Top 3. And this is where we try to capture the three most important ideas from each section of the mind map, really trying to summarize three key things that we can extract out of this whole brainstorm. This has the benefit of making these issues visible at a higher level in the mind map, rather than having to open up all the branches and subtopics and relying on icons or formatting that might be a little bit buried in the branch structure and therefore not always visible. 
If you use the top three branch approach to keep the mind map tidy, you may also want to move all of the brainstorming into a dedicated branch that we'll clearly label as brainstorming so that people know that all of the information, ideas, and context for our discussions can be found here, but the key issues we want to focus on are clearly shown here in our top three branch. So, having spent some time mapping out our current situation, we now start to look forward to where we want to get to in the future. The purpose now is to focus in on those three priority issues in each area of the mind map and define clear goals in relation to those issues. So here we've got a more developed version of the previous mind map. You can see that our top three sections have been made to stand out using some icons and a bit of formatting in MindMeister. And it's these top three sections that we're going to focus on now. But remember, of course, that all that brainstorming that we did before is captured and easily accessible in the brainstorming branch if we need to refer back to it for any reason. For now, all that detail can be hidden out of the way, which helps bring our focus onto these priority areas without distraction. As we now start to look forward, we can create a new branch in each section of the mind map that we can call goals or objectives or whatever wording works for you. So let's imagine we're going to set some goals for the next three months. And if we want, we can even edit the mind map to say 90 day goals if we want to be really explicit. At this stage, I encourage groups to think about the aspiration. What is it we would like to achieve based on these three key issues that we've surfaced in our swap mapping process and which we want to try and address or improve or fix? For example, under strengths, we might say that our overall aspiration is to achieve greater visibility for our work because we've identified that our leadership position, a strong team and an energized market are our top three strengths at this moment in time. And that suggests to us that now would be a good time to make ourselves more visible. Now, we might just leave that as the goal, but it's a little bit ambiguous. So we might choose to apply some of that smart goals approach and make it a little bit more specific and measurable by perhaps setting a goal of uh, increasing our website traffic by 20% as an example. This would indicate we're getting higher visibility for our work. And that maybe is something a little bit more measurable uh, that we can aim towards. Now, coming up with these goals can take some time and it may be not something you can do in one sitting, but whenever you get clear on what you want to try and achieve, you can add them here into the mind map nice and easily right alongside those top three issues that you've already identified. Now, just like we identified our top three issues in each area, it's a good idea to limit how many goals you set in each section of the mind map. If you have too many goals, you risk, of course, spreading yourself too thin and not achieving any of them. This is another good time to apply that top three thinking again and limit yourself to just three goals in any section of the mind map. If we now look at a version of this mind map that has been developed further still, you can see how this single document has gone from being a blank canvas for brainstorming right the way through to an excellent visual summary of our current situation and our now established future goals. The MindMeister map gives us a fantastic record of our strategic thinking and planning up to this point, and it's something that can be shared easily with team members and key stakeholders if we need to communicate with others about our plans now. Plus, of course, for anybody who needs to see some of the earlier stage thinking, we've also got an organized record of all the ideas and discussions that led us to these top three issues and these goals. We've got that safely captured within the brainstorming sections of the mind map, accessible to anyone who wants to see it. So, Having captured and developed a view of our current situation and then articulated some clear goals for the future, it's now time to start turning those ideas into action. The great news is that this too can be done within the same MindMeister map. A key idea here is to connect that big picture strategic thinking that you've just been doing with specific tangible action areas that you or others in your team can progress when you're back at your desks and normal daily working resumes. The benefits of using mind mapping software for this final stage in the process is that it allows you and your team to switch easily from big picture thinking, this macro level, high level view, into much more detailed action planning, all within the same tool, which helps to ensure you're identifying and planning actions in the most important areas because you've got that prioritization nice and visible that you've done before. So let's take a look at how that might work in our SWOT mind map. 
Within each main section of our mind map, we now have a clear set of priority issues that have been identified and our goals have also been defined. So we can now start to think about what actions are going to move us towards achieving those goals. We're going to create an actions branch within each section of the mind map. Now, you can, of course, just start capturing actions such as find new PR agency, but it can actually be more helpful to give yourself and your team a simple set of action prompts that might just help you to think more broadly about different types of action, which can often help to trigger ideas outside of the immediately obvious ones. For example, we like to use at Bigger Plate a simple start, stop, do more, do less prompt for our action planning. Now, if we add these into the action branch, you'll find it will just prompt people to think a little bit differently about the actions rather than just deferring to the most obvious things to do right away. As we start identifying actions in the map, we can use the completion icon to clearly mark something as a task to be completed. And we can then use that icon and update it within MindMeister to give ourselves a really quick visual summary of our progress towards certain actions. Building out actions, assigning them to team members, and ensuring we can clearly see progress on those actions is quick and easy within the MindMeister software, and all within the same mind map you can see we have now moved right the way through from an initial SWOT brainstorm to very specific action planning. From here, the mind map not only serves as an invaluable record of our thinking, but also serves as a central reference document for us to review when monitoring our progress on the actions identified and how we are advancing towards the goals that we set. So there it is, a quick look at how a single MindMeister map can support an end-to-end -end strategic planning process, helping you to think about where you are today, where you want to get to in the future, and the actions that will get you there. To try out MindMeister for yourself, head on over to mindmeister.com. For more resources to help you go further with mind mapping, visit biggerplate.com.